Number 10. Chaos at Church On June 16, 2022, a man fatally shot and killed three people at a church in Alabama with no real motive behind this act of violence. 71-year-old Robert Findlay Smith was at the Boomer's potluck dinner at the St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Vestavia Hills. About 25 people, including Smith, were present in the parish hall. A long-standing church member kindly invited Smith to join a table, but he declined the offer and remained seated alone. Suddenly, Smith pulled out a handgun and fired at three people. At this point, another church member, Jim Musgrove, bravely intervened, striking Smith with a chair and disarming him. 84-year-old Walter Rainey from Irondale, 75-year-old Sarah Yeager from Pelham, and 84-year-old Jane Pounds from Hoover were fatally shot in the process. Tragically, Walter died at the scene, while Sarah and Jane were rushed to the UAB hospital where they later succumbed to their injuries. The motive behind Smith's violent outburst remains unclear, as neither Emery Anthony, Smith's attorney, nor the prosecutor's office was able to provide a definitive answer. But it was evident that Smith felt remorse for his actions. District Attorney Danny Carr expressed that typically a case of this nature would be tried before a jury with the intention of seeking the death penalty. But after extensive discussion, contemplation and prayer, the families of the victims unanimously expressed their preference for a guilty plea to capital murder, ensuring a life sentence without the possibility of parole. He emphasized that as a result of this plea, there will be no appeal, ensuring that Smith will spend the rest of his life in prison. The guilty plea took place before Jefferson County Circuit Judge Candace Pickett, who handed Smith his sentence of life behind bars. Number 9 a mysterious suspect. On May 30th, 2005, a young woman vanished from the face of the earth. Natalie Holloway was just 18 years old when she disappeared in Aruba. She had been on a class trip with fellow high school seniors from Mountain Brook, Alabama and arrived in Aruba on May 26, 2005. The FBI's investigation revealed that Natalie and some friends had visited a nightclub called Carlos and Charlie's on the night of May 29th. After the club closed, she remained in the area as she was seen bar hopping with her group. The last known sighting of Natalie occurred around 1.30 a.m. on May 30th when witnesses saw her getting into a silver Honda with several individuals, including now 35-year-old Joran van der Sloot. Tragically, Natalie never returned to her room, and to this day, no one knows where she went. And in January 2012, a judge declared her legally dead. Van der Sloot, who suspected of being involved in Natalie's disappearance in 2005, is being extradited from Peru to the United States to face wire fraud charges. Peru's Minister of Justice made the announcement on May 10, 2023, marking a significant development in the long-standing case. Van der Sloot has been imprisoned in Peru for more than a decade after being arrested in 2010 for the murder of 21-year-old Stephanie Flores, whom he admitted to beating and strangling to death. As a result, he was sentenced to 28 years in a Peruvian prison. Interestingly, Flores was killed exactly five years after Natalie vanished, adding an interesting connection between the two cases. In June 2012, Five months after his conviction for Flores' murder, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Alabama charged Van der Sloot, a Dutch international, with wire fraud and extortion. The charges stemmed from allegations that he extorted hundreds of thousands of dollars from Natalie's mother, Beth Holloway, by falsely promising to provide information about Natalie's disappearance and the location of her body. He used deceitful tactics to convince Beth to make wire transfers of money. But despite his obvious involvement in these crimes, Van der Sloot's attorney has stated that they plan to appeal the extradition. And in January 2023, he got an additional 18 years in prison for trafficking cocaine. While the investigation into Natalie Holloway's case is ongoing, Van der Sloot will be held behind bars until justice is served. Number 8. A False Allegation On January 23, 2018, Two men and their dogs were brutally murdered by a man who suspected his girlfriend of cheating on him. The bodies of 59-year-old Joey Walker 
and 49-year-old Johnny Wissenant, along with their two dogs, were discovered in an apartment near 3rd Street Southwest. According to reports, Walker and Wissenant were subjected to a vicious attack involving beatings and stabbings. The gruesome crime came to light when a family member discovered their bodies and immediately alerted the landlord. Concerned, the landlord promptly visited the apartment and noticed bloodstains seeping out from under the door. Investigators swiftly identified Joseph Brown, an acquaintance of the victims, as the primary suspect in the case. However, the investigation took a dark turn when details emerged of an incident preceding the victims' death. Just a couple of days before the bodies were found, Brown's girlfriend informed the police that he had assaulted her out of suspicion of cheating. In a desperate attempt to protect herself from further harm, she lied and falsely accused Wissenant of assaulting her, fearing that Brown might hurt or even kill her if she told him the truth. Brown, driven by rage and seeking retribution, accompanied his girlfriend to Walker and Wissenant's apartment to confront Wissenant about the false allegation against him. But upon their arrival, the woman managed to escape and urgently called for assistance. A few days later, in a disheveled state and under the influence of drugs, Brown showed up at a drug treatment facility wearing almost nothing but his birthday suit. Because of that, he was arrested for public intoxication. During this time, investigators discovered that Brown's vehicle was located behind the apartment where the victims were found, leading to further suspicion. When questioned by authorities, Brown admitted to visiting the apartment with the intention of confronting Wissenant. However, on January 23, 2018, he returned to the scene with a knife and a tire thumper. He then carried out the murders of both men. Brown revealed that he also killed the dogs, fearing that their barking might attract attention. After he was done, he tried to clean the apartment and then moved the victims' bodies into a bedroom, concealing them under clothes and various items. Following his arrest, Brown faced multiple charges, including capital murder, aggravated cruelty to animals, and first-degree burglary. He's since been held in the Etua County Jail, awaiting his fate. Recent developments indicate that Brown entered a guilty plea for all charges leveled against him, and as a result, he's been sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the murders. Brown also received consecutive sentences of 99 years for the animal cruelty charges and a life sentence for the first-degree burglary charge. Number 7. A Devastating End On January 15, 2023, at around 1.45 a.m., a young Birmingham woman was brutally shot to death. That same day, a man approached a University of Alabama police officer. Distraught, he informed the cop that 23-year-old Jameer Harris, who was a passenger in his car, had been fatally shot. He then revealed that he had retaliated by returning fire, striking one of the suspects involved. Responding swiftly to the call, both the Tuscaloosa Police and County Sheriff's Office Violent Crimes Unit arrived at the scene to provide support and aid in the investigation. The driver, whose identity hasn't been revealed, informed the police that the shooting took place near University Boulevard on Grace Street. Following this lead, the authorities quickly identified two suspects in connection with the crime. They arrested 21-year-old Darius Miles and 20-year-old Michael Davis. Miles was a member of the University of Alabama's basketball team, but the school released a statement confirming his dismissal from the squad following his arrest. This development comes at a time when the Crimson Tide basketball team holds an impressive ranking of number four in the country. Captain Jack Kennedy from the Violent Crimes Unit provided some insight into the investigation. He revealed that investigators believe Miles, Davis, Harris and the driver had some form of encounter or altercation while out and about, which tragically escalated and resulted in the fatal shooting of Jameer Harris. Both suspects were charged with capital murder, so they were booked into the Tuscaloosa County Jail, where they remain without bond. What do you think their sentence will be? Tell us in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 6. Ex-Girlfriend Kidnapped In March 2022, a man kidnapped and took his ex-girlfriend across state lines, only for her to wind up dead days later. On March 27th, 37-year-old Casey Carley 
and 34-year-old Marcus Spanavello, who were no longer together, had arranged to meet for a custody exchange near Juana's Pagodas restaurant, which is located in Santa Rosa County, California. Carly was meeting Spanavello for the sole purpose of picking up their daughter after a visit with her father. The following day, Carly's dad reported her missing to the Santa Rosa Sheriff's authorities. On March 29th, her vehicle was discovered in the parking lot behind the restaurant where the meeting for the child exchange had taken place. Carly's purse and all of its contents were found inside the vehicle. Tragically, Carly's body was discovered on April 3rd in a shallow grave within a barn located on Highway 11 in Springville. This vacant property was one of two addresses associated with Spanavello in Springville, according to the authorities. Despite conducting a thorough autopsy, the final report failed to provide definitive answers regarding the cause and manner of Carly's death, leaving those details undetermined. It's worth noting that Spanavello had been living and working in Springville for several months leading up to Carly's disappearance, indicating a connection to the area where the body was ultimately discovered. Marcus Spanavello has since been prosecuted by a federal grand jury in Birmingham on a charge of kidnapping that led to the death of his ex-girlfriend. The indictment, consisting of a single count, alleges that Spanavello kidnapped Carly before killing her. Spanavello knowingly and unlawfully seized, confined, and transported Carly across state lines from Florida to Alabama, using various means of interstate and foreign commerce, including a cell phone and a GMC motor vehicle. The indictment states that these actions were committed for Spanavello's own benefit and purpose, and resulted in Carly's tragic death. On April 6, 2023, he pleaded not guilty to Carly's murder. As of now, Spanavello is set to face a jury of his peers in August 2023, where he could get either the death penalty or life behind bars for the crime. Number 5. A Deadly Argument On November 12, 2022, a fight between two roommates led to the tragic death of one of them in Cottondale, Alabama. Deputies from the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office responded to a residence on Fork Lane after receiving a tip suggesting that a man residing there had killed his roommate. During their investigation, the police made a disturbing discovery. The lifeless body of 61-year-old Barry Sartain in an outbuilding on the property. The roommate, identified as 24-year-old Daniel Scott Rayners, allegedly confessed to committing the murder and was subsequently taken into custody. Captain Jack Kennedy, the commander of the Violent Crimes Unit, provided details during a press conference, shedding light on the tragic events that unfolded between the suspect and the victim. According to Kennedy, the two individuals engaged in a physical altercation that ultimately resulted in homicide. Surprisingly, the suspect even assisted officers in the search for the victim prior to the discovery of the body. Kennedy revealed that the victim had been deceased for a couple of days before law enforcement located him. Although there were other individuals residing in the home, Kennedy clarified that they weren't involved in the case and weren't even present at the time of the killing. It suspected that drugs and alcohol played a role in the tragic events leading up to the murder. While the investigation is still ongoing, Kennedy revealed that Sartain had suffered both beatings and stab wounds during the altercation. Although the exact number of stab wounds has not yet been determined, evidence suggests that the victim was stabbed multiple times. According to the authorities, Rainers had the intention to kill, a fact that was made evident by looking at the wounds sustained by the victim. Rainers is now in custody and awaits trial, and he faces the severe possibility of serving life in prison. Number 4. The Fateful Denial On October 21, 2022, a man from Alabama unleashed a brutal attack on his girlfriend after becoming frustrated when she refused to engage in sexual activity with him. 38-year-old Justin Fields now faces charges of murder and the abuse of a corpse following the gruesome events. The victim, 52-year-old Tammy Bailey, suffered a horrifying fate at the hands of Fields. Reports indicate that Fields used an 8-inch survival knife to viciously assault his live-in girlfriend. 
The violence escalated as he proceeded to dismember and behead her. The scene discovered by the law enforcement was beyond comprehension, with Blount County Sheriff Mark Moon describing it as one of the most disturbing and traumatic experiences his officers have ever encountered. Body cam footage captured the chilling confession of Fields at the crime scene. In the video, he admits to committing an unimaginable act and reveals that the evidence can be found inside the house. Fully aware of the consequences of his actions, Fields tells the officers that he expects to be arrested. According to officials, Fields and Bailey had gone out to celebrate his birthday on the night of the incident. After leaving their shared residence on Bailey Drive in Alabama, they traveled to a Springville area approximately 30 minutes away. Upon returning home, Fields wanted to engage in sexual activity with Bailey, but she refused. Moon shared further details, stating that Fields consumed a drink of brandy and retreated to his bedroom, where he began playing his guitar. But his frustration grew, leading him to enter Bailey's room and try to convince her once again. When she rejected him once more, his anger boiled over, resulting in the fatal stabbing. Fields claimed to have experienced a blackout following the initial attack. Afterward, he returned to his room where he fell asleep. The following day, he awoke with the belief that he had been having a disturbing dream and proceeded to stab Bailey more than 100 times. Moon alleged that the victim likely died from the first blow, and when law enforcement returned to the scene the next day, her body had not been disturbed. Deputies arrived at the location at around 5.30 p.m. Fields, who had been waiting outside, admitted to law enforcement that he had done something terrible and directed them to the evidence inside the house. And as the area was secured, Fields cooperated with the deputy by allowing himself to be handcuffed. When additional officers arrived as backup, they entered the home and were confronted with the gruesome sight of Bailey's mutilated remains. Surprisingly, Fields had no previous criminal record, according to court records and interviews conducted after the heinous crime revealed no history of mental health issues. Fields is currently detained in the Blount County Jail as he awaits trial. Number 3. Bad Problem Solving On September 21, 2018, a nurse reported her husband missing in Madison County after poisoning him with insulin and burying him in the garage of their home. The victim, 37-year-old James Jim Capello, was a well-respected private investigator in the local area. During the sentencing hearing, 32-year-old Marjorie Nikki Capello displayed no emotion as she received her punishment for the crime. The unsettling series of events began in September 2018, when Nikki reported her husband missing. Jimmy's co-workers grew concerned when he failed to show up for work, prompting them to visit their home. However, Nikki refused to allow them access inside. Concerned by the situation, Huntsville police arrived at the Capello residence and detected the smell of a decomposing body. Despite Nikki's initial resistance, officers eventually obtained a search warrant for the home's garage. There, they made a chilling discovery. Jimmy's body was wrapped in a tarp near a car. His feet were positioned on the floorboard, suggesting an attempt to place him inside the vehicle. The plot thickened when on September 22, 2018, Nikki contacted a friend and asked for help in moving and disposing of the body. She later retracted the request and advised the friend not to worry about it. During the search of the Capella residence, investigators stumbled upon a bottle of insulin. Inquiries revealed that the bottle of insulin had gone missing from the hospital where Nikki worked as a nurse. Some of her colleagues reportedly disclosed to detectives that Nikki had confessed to marital difficulties and had made disturbing comments indicating that the only resolution to her problems would be her husband's demise. Jim had suspected Nikki of drug use and intended to separate from her while seeking custody of their daughter. As a result, Jimmy's sister now has full custody of the young girl. Nikki was found guilty of intentional murder in May 2019 after a four-day trial. The jury took just half an hour to reach their verdict and she was sentenced to life in prison. She received her sentence from a Madison County Circuit Court judge in 2022. Number 2. Greed In March 2017, a man hogtied and suffocated his own mother before burying her body in Baldwin County. 
34-year-old Clark Rains asphyxiated his mother, 68-year-old Kay Rains. Not only did he kill his mother, but he also callously watched her die before burying her face down in a shallow grave. According to trial testimony, suspicions were raised when a neighbor reported the woman missing after she failed to return from a casino outing in Biloxi. Clark Rains further aroused suspicion when he began using his mother's credit cards. The police responded by placing a tracking device in Rain's car, leading them to a location on Alabama 225, a wooded area north of Bay Minette. There, they discovered the victim's body, still clothed in the outfit she had worn in Biloxi. Rain's defense attorney presented a lengthy list of his client's prior diagnoses of substance abuse and mental illnesses, which he argued his client had struggled with over the years. He expressed the belief that if Rain's could gain control over these issues, he could potentially have a successful future. Deputy public defender Richard Foreman also sought to downplay Rain's criminal record, which included arrests dating back to 1999 and four previous felony convictions. However, the prosecution contested Rain's actions, particularly regarding the money. They argued that the inheritance Rain's mother received was rightfully hers to spend as she saw fit. It wasn't Rain's entitlement, as it had been left specifically to his mother by her late husband. After a lot of back and forth, Rain's was sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole. The ruling was made by Mobile County Circuit Judge Jay York, following a prosecution request from a severe sentence. In addition to the life sentence, Judge York imposed the maximum prison term of 10 years for each of the 12 counts of unauthorized credit card use. Number 1. Hopelessness On January 18, 2023, at around 11.15 p.m., a man and his two children were found dead in Tennessee. The Madison County Sheriff's Office received a call and dispatched deputies to conduct a welfare check on 43-year-old Jennifer Lepore at her residence on Shelmo Lane in Hazel Green. When they entered the home, the deputies discovered that Jennifer had passed away. The cause of her death, however, remains undetermined as the autopsy results have not been made public yet. As the investigation unfolded, law enforcement officers became aware that Jennifer's husband, 46-year-old Jamie Lepore, and their two young sons, 9-year-old Jesse and 11-year-old Sean, had all disappeared. Acting on this information, authorities managed to identify a potential location for Jamie in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Recognizing the urgency, they reached out to the Merce Freeboro Police Department for assistance in locating Jamie and the two young boys. Police officers reported that they went to a residence on Carson Lane, where Jamie was believed to be located. While engaging in a conversation with a tenant outside the residence, law enforcement officers suddenly heard gunshots emanating from inside the home. The officers swiftly entered the residence only to encounter a tragic scene. Jamie, Jesse and Sean were found dead inside. It's believed that Jamie took the lives of his family members before turning the weapon on himself. But the investigation into the case is ongoing. Would you ever visit Alabama after hearing about these crimes? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Bad Badger.